In January 2023, almost three years ago, Bray Falls published a video detailing how he helped discover a nebula. What's really surprising about this is that the nebula's apparent position in the night sky is almost right smack dab next to the Andromeda galaxy. Let me quote Bray Falls with what he said. He said, with so many eyes on the galaxy for the last hundred years, it's quite surprising that no one up until this point has noticed that there is a huge undiscovered nebula right next to it. So what's going on? The problem I think is threefold. One is just related to how people think. So cognition. Two is tangentially related to just telescopes and cameras in general. And three, there could be something about noise that's the issue. How you say? Let's find out. Welcome to Deep Sky Detail. Before we get started, I've got something special I want to show you. I want you to focus on something for a second. This should be pretty easy, especially for expert astrophotographers. One second. So this right here is my old CCD camera. It's great. I want you to stare at the back of this for a little bit and then and then at the end of the video, I'm going to ask you a question about what you just saw. So I'm going to hold it up a bit closer so you can see it. OK, are you looking at it now? Try to memorize how many ports it has. Also, kind of take a look at the back of it. Just in general, what does it look like? Now I'm going to take it away and put it back in its case. If you like, you can pause and put in the comments what you noticed about what you just saw. I'm sure some of you will be surprised about what other people wrote. But before I move on, let me tell you about why I'm making this video. I'm between kind of big projects at the moment. I've just published a very long video about almost every beginning astrophotography term. It took a few months to put that one together in my spare time, and I'm about to analyze a bunch of data related to narrow band filters. That will also take a good chunk of my time. I kind of just want to have a little bit of fun and hopefully not start a lot of online arguments with a quick video about something that has been on my mind for the past year. And in a bit, I'm going to be talking a little bit critically about noise reduction in astrophotography. I don't want you to misunderstand me. I'm all for noise reduction tools. I've used them in my tutorials. I've created an AI noise reduction tool. I'm not saying don't use noise reduction. I just want to go over some of the potential pitfalls that can happen if you use the tools too much. Just like there are pitfalls if you sharpen an image too much. All right, let's talk about cognition. So how could so many people miss a nebula that is right next to the Andromeda galaxy? and is almost just as long as the galaxy itself. I'll put a link to Bray Falls' video so you can see the picture for yourself, but I feel like astrophotographers are pretty much experts in imaging the night sky. They should have found it much sooner than just a couple of years ago. Like, what is going on? Are we all crazy? Are we even able to see anything at all? The answer might be kind of no. We can't actually see everything. Now, let me qualify that. We don't see things that we aren't paying attention to. Really, we just don't. Sometimes it's like they're not even there. In a famous cognitive experiment by Simons and Chabri, they asked participants to watch how many times a ball was being passed around by a group of college students. During the task, a person in a gorilla suit walked through the scene. About half the participants who watched the video didn't even notice the gorilla. They were paying attention to the ball. And this study has been replicated in different domains too. So for example, in one study, radiologists didn't notice a gorilla in MRI scans. To me, that's pretty wild. But the gorilla is not a particularly subtle thing. The fact that half the participants missed it simply because they weren't expecting it and not paying attention to that part of the scene, it really speaks to the fact that at any given time, you're only really looking at a small portion of your field of view. The rest of your vision is kind of blurry. So let's go back to Andromeda for a second, and we can figure out why people miss the O3 nebulosity for so long. Andromeda is just a really attractive target, meaning it, it attracts people's attention, and it sucks up their attention when they look at it. Give me one sec, let me show you something. All right, here is an image that I took of this of the Andromeda galaxy earlier this year. It may not be the best image, but there's a lot going on. 
the nebula in question is like somewhere up here. But I think that most people, when they look at the Andromeda galaxy and the region are going to be pulled into the, to the galaxy itself. It's just so bright and you might not notice anything else that's around it, like the star, for example. Now, there's another aspect to this, and that's that the harder something is to see, the harder it is to notice. Andromeda grabs your attention and the nebula is really, really faint. And you've got a reason for why people ignore it. In fact, maybe it's not really related to attention at all. Maybe there are other things going on. Some of you might be saying to yourself, yeah, well, Andromeda is a pretty large object in the sky. It takes up about three degrees from end to end. That's about six times longer than the full moon. A lot of telescope camera combinations don't have a large field of view. So there aren't that many people that actually image that part of the sky. Let's look at the picture of Andromeda again for a second. The nebula in question is, is somewhere here. It's outside of the field of view in this image. I've actually got an image from a research paper that the Deep Sky Collective wrote. So I'll share the link in the description of the comments. This is from page eight of their preprint, by the way. So the nebula in question is kind of close to Andromeda in its apparent position, but you would actually need a very large field of view telescope to capture this whole image. This field of view, this large field of view most astrophotographers don't have, or rather large sensors weren't widely available until a few years ago. So yeah, that probably has something to do with it too. But even so, there are a lot of wide field images of Andromeda out there with lenses and such. So again, why did people miss it in those images? Well, the last part of this video has to do with noise. Noise in astrophotography is a problem. And the biggest problem is noise from light pollution. Give me one second. Look at this. So this is an illustration of light pollution in the United States at night. Look at all the light leaking from space from all of these cities. Well, all of that light destroys faint detail in astrophotography because it gets spread out in the atmosphere. To get around it, a lot of people use light pollution filters, just like this one. The same filter that would be used to capture the, the nebula and the Andromeda image. But Andromeda itself, is a broadband target, meaning it emits light throughout the visible spectrum. A lot of light pollution filters, just like this one, don't really work on Andromeda itself, but the nebula that Brave Falls captured kind of needs an O3 filter to image well, especially in light polluted skies. So if light pollution weren't a problem, I think that maybe a lot of people would have discovered it sooner, and I'll, I'll explain why I think that. Now, I teased this earlier in the video, but because noise, especially light pollution noise, is such a big deal in astrophotography, it makes me wonder how astrophotographers are using noise reduction tools. Imagine for a second that you have just imaged a broadband target like Andromeda using a short wide field scope with a big sensor. And you notice some funky gradient happening in the corner of the image. You run Graxpert AI, which is a neural network that can help remove gradients and the effects of light pollution. Then you use another noise reduction tool to get rid of the salt and pepper noise that's left behind. Both of those tools you thought were helping remove light pollution noise. But what if you accidentally just deleted some real nebulosity? What if that wasn't really a gradient, but faint integrated flux nebula? Is this problem widespread? I don't, I don't know, but it's something to think about. Oh, <laughs> hi, Dr. Detail. You're late to this video. I'm not late. I showed up multiple times. I wonder if the viewers noticed. Really? Yeah. Weren't you going to tell them something special about your old CCD camera? Y yeah, but I figure if the viewers go back and look really carefully, they'll see it. That is, if they can pay attention to it. All right. See ya. See ya. Okay, so you've stayed this long. You might as well know what happened, why I showed you my old CCD camera. And the answer is really just to see if you're paying attention to the peripheral vision because Dr. Detail popped in and out of that scene very quickly as I was trying to tell you to focus on the ports and things. I'm sure that a lot of you got it. And it's it's not like Dr. Detail popped in or out 11 more times during the video. And if he did, I'm sure that you would notice it. All right, thanks for watching. Well, have you ever thought about why light pollution is so bad? I've got a video on that or this one that the algorithm recommends.